Mr. President. The Senator from Virginia. Mr. President, I ask to um, speak for up to 15 minutes. Without objection. Mr. President, I originally was going to engage in a colloquy with uh, Senator Portman on a piece, very important piece of legislation that we and Senator Coburn and Senator uh, Carper have been working on for two years. Uh, he had to leave, but he will come back. So I ask unanimous, unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of calendar number 337S994. The clerk will report. Calendar number 337S994, a bill to expand the federal funding accountability and transparency act of 2006 and so forth and for other purposes. I ask you. Is there objection to proceeding to the measure without objection? I ask unanimous consent the committee reported substitute amendment be withdrawn. The Carper substitute amendment, which is at the desk, be considered. The Carper amendment at the desk be agreed to. The Carper substitute as amended be agreed to. And the bill as amended be read a third time and passed with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Well, Mr. President, um, after the last exchange, I would point out that the Senate now has acted on a very important piece of legislation that has been two years in working that actually does reflect the ability for us to come together in a bipartisan consensus. So I rise today to discuss the Digital Accountability and Transparency, or Data Act, an important bill that will make sure that taxpayers and policymakers can track every dollar the federal government spends. It's pretty unbelievable that this day and age, we don't have an easily accessible website for tracking every federal tax dollar. But believe it or not, we don't. Instead, we have incomplete and thoroughly confusing structure of financial reporting, which most people can't understand. Mr. President, I've served in business. I've served as governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, so I've done business accounting, state government accounting. There is nothing like federal government accounting and the lack of standards and transparency. Our taxpayers do know, deserve to know where their money goes, and it is our obligation to share that information in a clear and direct way. Today, Senator Portman and I originally, along with Senator Coburn and Car Carper, uh, rise, and now that the Senate has acted, we're actually taking a giant step to correct that problem and to make sure that taxpayers actually get the currency they deserve. Since the federal government spends more than $3.7 trillion each year, with more than $1 trillion in awards, accurately tracking these funds in a consistent way can definitely be a big job. With the data collected by the budget shops, the accountants, the procurement officers, the grant makers should be combined, reconciled, and then presented in a relevant, user-friendly, and transparent way. The various systems should be able to work together based on consistent financial standards so that policymakers and the public can track the full cycle of federal spending. In a word, the public should be able to Wikipedia where and how the federal government spends its money. And quite honestly, that's what the Data Act will do. The Data Act will make four important improvements that I want to quickly highlight. First, it creates transparency for all federal funds. The Data Act will expand the current use of USAspending.gov to include spending data for all federal funds by appropriation, federal agency, program, function, as well as maintain the current reporting for federal awards like contracts, grants, and loans. Second, and this is a giant standard, giant step forward, we're not going to get all the way there, but we're starting down this path to setting government-wide financial data standards. We closely monitored the efforts to increase transparency for the Recovery Act funds a few years back. And one reason, even for folks who didn't like the Recovery Act, that that oversight was successful, it was because they had consistent standards for reporting the data. Our taxpayers were able to see where the funds and projects were located in their communities. So the Data Act requires the Department of Treasury to establish government-wide financial data standards for federal agencies so that every term reported is consistent across the federal government. This should clearly improve the quality of data. Too often we see an item appear, one area is a grant, another area is an expenditure. Trying to sort through what's what is virtually impossible. This part of the Data Act will help clear that up. Third, so we don't simply layer on additional reporting requirements without greater accountability, 
it actually reduces recipient reporting requirements. The Data Act requires OMB to review the established reporting requirements for contracts, grants, and loans to re reduce compliance costs based on these new financial data standards. I've long been concerned, and I know many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, about the compliance cost for recipients of federal funds. Too often, a grantee has to report not once or twice, but sometimes up to a half dozen times the exact same information. We've seen this in Virginia with many of our universities, like UVA, where they actually have to report multiple times the same information to multiple agencies. If all this redundancy were streamlined, recipients like the University of Virginia or the University of Tennessee could actually direct more money to programs and less to administrative costs. Fourth, it improves data quality. Under the Data Act, the inspectors general at each agency will be required to provide a report every two years on the quality and accuracy of the financial data provided to USAspending.gov. The GAO will create a government-wide report on quality and accuracy. Too often, the data that is reported at this point doesn't meet appropriate standards. We must have a reliable system in place to track federal funds and compare spending across federal agencies to get the best value for taxpayers and reduce duplication. In fact, in the GAO's annual report on duplication released this week, it highlighted the need for better, de better data and specifically called out the limitations GAO described as, quote, lack of reliable budget and performance information and a comprehensive on and a comprehensive list of federal programs. The GAO cited this as one of the biggest challenges in addressing duplication. You know, I know that um, many of the members, when I started talking about data standards and better accountability, headed for the exits. I recognize that this is not a topic that necessarily uh, excites folks, but I see my colleague, the senator from Tennessee, on the floor, former governor as well as I have. If we are going to give better value for our taxpayers, we have to ha start with good data. We have to start with a better ability to monitor that data and follow it. In a world where people can Google all kinds of information, we ought to be able to follow the money in terms of where our taxpayer dollars head. We ought to make sure that those recipients of those taxpayer grants can report that information in a single, consistent, and clear way. And policymakers and taxpayers should be able to assess the value of the dollars that we invest in these programs. You know, this has been a long and winding path. As a relatively new member of the Senate, uh, and I hear some of the debates about some of the, the old days in the Senate, I'm not sure I was here with the old days. But this was a case where over a two-year period, working with members of the House, uh, Chairman Issa and Ranking Member Cummings in the House, here in the Senate with Senator Carper and Senator Coburn, Senator Coburn who's out today with health reasons, and my colleague who joined with me in pushing this bill from day one, Senator Portman, who if time allows will get back from his speech to add his comments as well. I would like to thank uh, these members. I would also like to thank uh, all of the Senate co-sponsors for the support of the Data Act, including members of our Budget Government Performance Task Force that I chair. I'd like to thank in particular Senators Coons, Whitehouse, Ayotte, Johnson, and our Budget Committee Chairman Patty Murray, and my staff, Amy Edwards, and all the others who have been relentless on working through with other committees and the administration um, to make sure that we got this bill done. So while we may not have resolved all the issues of the day, today the Senate acted in a unanimous, bipartisan way to actually provide better value for taxpayers more transparency, and less bureaucracy. I'd say for Thursday afternoon, with all of the other discussion going on, work well done. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Tennessee, I ask. Mr. President, thank you. I, I was not able to be here uh, a little while ago. Like from Virginia, Mr. Warner uh, got unanimous consent to pass the Data Act. This is the Digital Accountability and Transparency Act. It's something he and I have been working on over the last couple of years, and uh, it's a good bill. It's about good government, and I'm delighted we were able to pass it uh, this afternoon in the Senate. I now hope it will go to the House. 
uh, for passage, we can get it to the President's desk because it really will help to give all of us as taxpayers a better view into our government. Specifically, uh, it improves federal financial transparency and data quality, both of which are going to help identify and eliminate wasteful spending, certainly something we should be focused on given our huge debts and deficits and all the pressure on our spending. It will also ease the compliance burden, though, on those people who are working with the federal government, recipients of federal funds. Uh, at the same time, it improves the data that they send to the federal government. So it's a win-win uh, for the taxpayer, for good government, for getting at this issue of uh, use. It's an issue that transcends party lines. I want to thank uh, my friend, Senator Tom Coburn, because he has been a leader on this uh, in the Government Affairs Committee, where, where I serve, and also the chairman of the committee, Tom Carper. Without their help, uh, Senator Warner and I would not have been able to get those, this bill to the floor today. Uh, we also had a number of other co-sponsors uh, on a bipartisan basis. But we all know that the federal government spends a lot of money, over $3 trillion a year, and the goal is that we know more about how that's money spent so that we can ensure it's being spent on the right things. And this legislation, the Data Act, picks up on lessons we've learned about how to make it more accountable, how to make it more transparent, uh, so that taxpayers have a better understanding of how money's being used. This has to do with grants, contracts. Um, it's something that's going to help, I think, to ensure that we're not just spending the money right, uh, but that we also are eliminating fraud and abuse that we otherwise would, would not find. I first got involved in this issue when I was at the Office of Management and Budget. Um, I support it uh, and then was tasked with implementing a 2006 bill uh, that was actually introduced by Senator Coburn and Senator Obama at the time. And it was called the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act, FAFATA. Unfortunate acronym, in my view. But FAFATA worked uh, in the sense that it led to something which is called USSpending.gov. And uh, I will tell you, back then, a lot of federal agencies thought this just can't be done. We can't improve our transparency uh, up to the standards that were established in FAFATA. And we proved them wrong. And it was because of a lot of hard work by a lot of uh, folks in the agencies and at the Office of Management and Budget, where I served as director. Uh, and it ended up with the ability for taxpayers to get a wealth of information online, again, about federal grants, federal contracts, to understand better how their tax dollars were being spent. It was a good start. Uh, it also helped us learn some lessons about how to even improve fiscal data quality and transparency even more. Uh, we've learned that the data on U.S. government can be more comprehensive, more accurate, more reliable, and more timely. Uh, by the way, if you have not gone on this website, USSpending.gov, I recommend it. And I will also tell you, if we pass this legislation, you will like going on it even more because the data that you will be seeing will be more understandable, would be more uniform across the agencies and will enable us all as taxpayers to get a better view into the government. So what does it do? First, it makes it easier to compare spending across the federal agencies by requiring establishment of these government-wide standards. Uh, this is as to financial data standards, very difficult thing to do. As I learned when I was at the Office of Management and Budget, it sounds easy, but it's hard, but it really pays off. And it does promote consistency and reliability in data. Second, it strengthens the federal financial transparency by reforming and significantly improving the website itself. It requires now more uh, frequent updates, so monthly financial updates of spending by each federal pe uh, agency on their programs and at the object class level basis. So it's basically more data, more specific data, more up-to-date data, so it refreshes the website more, again, to make it more useful. Third, it empowers the Inspector General uh, and the GAO to hold agencies accountable. Now, putting the inspectors general into this, I think, is a good idea uh, because it has another level of accountability. This will be making them more accountable for completeness, timeliness, quality, and accuracy of the data that they're submitting to USAspending.gov. Uh, and again, this is new and it's going to make the website work even better. And fourth, it simplifies the reporting requirements by recipients of federal funds, eliminating unnecessary duplication and burdensome uh, regulations, uh, streamlines, basically, what people have to provide to the federal government. So this will actually make it easier for us to understand what's going on with these contractors, again, as taxpayers doing oversight, uh, but it also makes it easier to do business with the federal government, it makes it less complicated for them, more transparency for taxpayers. So another good aspect of this legislation. I think each of these reforms is going to enhance federal financial accountability in real ways, allowing citizens to track government spending better, allowing agencies to more easily identify improper payments, unnecessary spending. Um, we have a big issue around here with spending, obviously. We're spending more than we take in every year to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. We have a 
debt that is now at least $17 trillion, um, it's time to make sure that we're not wasting money that could be applied to that debt or could pay for programs that are top priorities. And this bipartisan legislation will help us get there. I'm really pleased we were able to get it passed today. And again, I'm going to be working hard with Senator Warner and others to ensure that we can get this through the House to the President's desk for signature so that we can indeed uh, begin to help all of us as citizens have a better view into our federal government. Uh, with that, Mr. President, uh, I would uh, yield. A